السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن ولا ما بعد Dear brothers and sisters, uh, today I'm going to discuss a very important concept in the Quran. As usual, the title will come at the end. It will be the last slide. Whenever you recite the Quran, you might have noticed that the punishment, the, the verses of punishment and the verses of forgiveness are mentioned next to each other. Have you noticed that? It, it comes in several places in the Quran. Yes. Okay. Same way, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about hellfire, in the very next ayat, Allah Rabbul Alamin will mention about Jannah. Or after the description of the hellfire is complete, you will immediately mention about Jannah. Have you, have you noticed this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, this cannot be a coincidence, right? So, there is definitely a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it. So, let's look at a couple of examples, right? Just a couple of examples. Look at this ayat. It's in Surah Hijr, ayat number 49. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nabbi ibadi anni anal ghafuru rahim. Inform my servants. is basically telling the Prophet sallallahu Announce to them, give them the news that I am the most forgiving, the most merciful. Okay? This is ayat number 49. Let's go to 50. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa anna adabi huwal adabul alim. And inform that my punishment, it is the most painful punishment. You can clearly see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about forgiveness in the previous ayah and the very next ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the painful punishment. Okay, this is about forgiveness and punishment. Now let's look at this ayat which talks about hellfire and this is a very well known ayat. Whoever rejects our signs surely we will make them enter into the fire. Whenever their skin is burnt completely we will replace it so that they will taste the punishment. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almighty, all wise. The very next ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as far as those who believe and do good, we will admit them into jannas, paradises, plural, under which rivers flow to stay there forever and ever. There they will have pure spouses and we will admit them under a deep shade. Okay, very next ayat. So the previous ayat is speaking about hellfire and the terrible punishment in hellfire. And the very next ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about jannah and the pleasures in Jannah. Okay. So what do you understand when you see this ayat right next to each other? How do you see this? Allah has mentioned them, right? Right next to each other. So uh, what is the learning is a, hmm. One is a warning. Uh, one is a hmm. warning and the other one is a glad tidings. Hmm. Okay. One is Allah a warning. Okay. Hmm. Has mercy overpowers his wraps. Uh, okay. Hmm. Uh, so I would say um, in Hadith Qudsi, Allah says like my mercy is um, greater than my wrath. So okay. I would see this was just an example for that. How is that an example? So um, when we talk, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about punishments, he's hmm. also mentioned about like his mercy there, like admitting people who are believers and also hmm. people who are seek forgiveness into paradise. So, mm -hmm. uh, this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only is punishing, but he also gives a chance for like people, um, like uh, uh, the believers. Correct. Uh, no doubt about it. Okay. But, 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 you know, how do we come to the conclusion that the mercy is encompassed, right? It's encompassing the punishment. So, that is not very evident. Now, you are linking a different hadith kudusi or a different ayat here, right? It's not explicitly stated in these two. Am I right? Right. Yes. Okay. No problem. But, but we can understand that. Yes. There's a statement of Umar bin Khattab, you know, he used to say, I live between uh, between a state of fear and hope. Hmm. Right? So, basically, these two the ayats, you know, give us, hmm. you know, they, Allah SWT wants us to create a mindset, like, to live between hope and fear. Mm -hmm. Right? Not to misunderstand Allah's, Allah's mercy and not to add, uh, underestimate the, his punishment. So they, actually, you know, this is very, very important for human psychology, you know. Hmm. Uh, um, this is a, a wonderful, you know, in a sense, like, you know, if Allah would, spawn, Allah would have only mentioned punishment and that would have also discouraged hmm. us, right? If you okay. only mentioned the mercy, you know, not punishment, then you would have taken it very light. Okay. Yeah. So that's why, you know, he brings this together so that, you know, you will not go to the extreme out, out of the bound. Okay. Okay. 
okay okay this is all uh, you know uh, there's no right or incorrect answer here it's just about how we understand uh, things right so no issues with that so this session inshallah taala i am i will try to give a completely new perspective when i say completely completely new and you can probably end of the session you can tell me whether it was a new perspective that you gained or no okay let's see inshallah and this is extremely important inshallah i hope that by allah's mercy there will be some value that you will take out uh, whenever you read these verses and whenever you're going to ask forgiveness today inshallah taala okay i want you to think about this say you made some mistakes okay this is just an example okay so don't take it personal you made some mistakes now i am in the position to punish you okay this is just an example okay i am in the position to punish you so i am telling you for your mistakes for the mistakes that you did i should have i should have actually fined you 10000 rupees but okay chalo i'll forgive you okay how will you react to it i'm telling you for your mistakes i should actually fined you 10000 rupees but i'm forgiving you how will you react grateful to you will be grateful Yes, okay. yes. Okay, very good. Full, now, full. okay, fine. This is one, right? For the same mistakes, right? I'm telling you again. For your mistakes, I should have actually fined you five lakh rupees, but I will forgive you. Will will the gratitude that you told me in the previous case will it be the same or will it be more? More. Why? More. Both are forgiveness. Why more? In the sense. Huh? Penalty is increased. Penalty ah, penalty is increased. Is increased. Ah, 10, 000, to... Chale yaar. Okay. Pay kar ye. Five lakh, five lakh ka. You, you. Huh? You'll see, right? Okay. I say, for your mistakes, I It'll be different or no? It'll be different? Yes. Okay. Me. Okay. Now I say for your mistakes, I should have jailed you for life. I should have given you a life imprisonment. But I forgive you. Now, will the reaction be the same? No way. No way. No, it will not. Okay. I go one step further. I say, for the mistakes you made, I should have chopped off your arms and legs. Hmm. But I forgive you. If I don't forgive you. your arms and legs will be chopped off but i forgive you how will you react how will you react speechless extremely grateful just grateful na huh? that's it you extremely, just you know got away with you just got away with your arms grateful. and legs you will be relieved grateful you will be in tears are bhai sahab right and i want to give a simple example let's say maad allah may allah protect all of us let's say there is a riot and you know the situation and the mob is out there to lynch you right you are with your family with your kids you are done right you you are completely lost hope from somewhere some guy comes and helps you he rescues you and he takes you takes you to his home and he keeps you safe how will you react will you just say thank you you will never forget that person for life correct or not yes or no Yes, brother. Yes, you see, because it was a matter of life and death. So I want you to think about this. This is something very, very important. In the first case, it was ten thousand rupees and forgiveness. Second case, five lakh forgiveness. Third case, five years jail forgiveness. Fourth case, life sentence forgiveness. Fifth case, arms and legs chopped off forgiveness. On the right side, you see every. time there was something penalty or a punishment there was forgiveness correct but what is changing in the left the amount of punishment keeps changing and everybody said that in the first case right the 10000 when i forgave you the reaction you had the gratitude you felt was completely different from the forgiveness that was given to you when you were threatened with your arms and legs being chopped off am i correct or not yes or no although yes. everything has got forgiveness the magnitude of forgiveness is very very high when there is a lot of threat so what is the learning here the more severe the punishment the more value the forgiveness has got this is the learning i want you to think about this this is extremely important so powerful so when you were rather when you have very very in a situation where they could have taken your arms and legs 
that was that should have been the punishment but you have been forgiven that forgiveness is priceless right you cannot thank enough and you will never forget that why because you know imagine living without arms and legs but you are forgiven as opposed to the 10000 rupees which okay it's forgiveness but i mean it doesn't have the same value so the more severe the punishment the more value the forgiveness is right okay look at this ayat again allah subhanahu wa taala says and inform that my punishment it is the most painful punishment very very important now everybody knows this right you know there are several ayat in the quran which says where allah subhanahu wa taala says my punishment is very very painful uh, you know we know that but do we really realize that many of us right we are a spoiled community when i say spoiled right you know how we spoil a child huh? we neither realize what are we going to get in janna nor do we realize the severity of the punishment in jahannam we don't as a community we think we know but we don't we take it for granted we take the janna also for granted we take punishment also for granted in hellfire we are a spoiled community that is why the community is like this so inshallah taala from today onwards whenever you think about punishment you should take it very serious so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show this image yes it is very graphic and nobody should close the eyes you have to watch it so what is happening here is somebody is pulling out the nail this is called as a denailing okay and this is a very very basic torture technique that is used throughout the world you know our police force in india they use this very basic huh? it is nothing i mean this is nothing we are just getting started with torture very basic lkg in torture right pulling out the nails and i want to just imagine if somebody pulls out your nails and you can clearly see that it's a very graphic image imagine the amount of pain you will have you will not die excruciating pain yes and by the way this is just a basic we are getting started and you actually go and look into the different torture techniques that people use many of you will not sleep there are several torture techniques that you will not even imagine you know do will will human beings torture other people like that there are torture techniques like that water boarding is one of the worst torture techniques i don't know how many of you know about water boarding if not you must look up videos in youtube right uh, there is one video about christopher hitchens the famous atheist who passed away right he actually volunteered himself uh, to undergo water boarding he volunteered and there is a video i think it was done by bbc or something like that it is there in youtube he couldn't last for 5 seconds now they gave him a bell and immediately rang the bell he said it was literally close to death right and this is how people are tortured our brothers and sisters in gaza this is how they are tortured tor- tortured right we are sitting here aram say you know we will do dua huh? but you know this is how they are tortured allah subhanahu wa taala protect all of us and give us afia to all of us amin rabbal alamin now what is the point in me showing this i want you to think about it if human beings in their limited capacity can torture people can inflict so much of pain on a fellow human being when allah subhanahu wa taala says my punishment is the most painful punishment can you imagine how terrible that punishment will be how much of pain it will cause how much of suffering it will lead to unimaginable if human beings can torture people to the extent that people they lose consciousness because of pain there's so much of pain the brain has never received so much pain it will just cut off and the people they become unconscious it happens so much of pain if human beings can do that artificially with lot of torture mechanisms if they can do that allah subhanahu wa taala in his unlimited power and authority imagine what will be the severity of his punishment which he himself declares the most painful punishment do we take it so serious if somebody says i'll pull your nail out if you don't do will anybody take a chance we will immediately you you nail you i will do sir whatever you want you do sir what do you want me to do right immediately complete surrender for one nail allah subhanahu wa taala in quran so many places is warning us if you have really taken it serious right our life would have changed but we will say we will believe and all that right but this nail nailing that is just as in the starter if you are very serious you have to go and see what are the torture techniques that people use and how innovative people get when it comes to torturing people 
only then you will understand if human beings can use their creativity and imagination in torturing people in different manners in different ways imagine allah subhanahu wa taala la hawla wala quwwata illa billah may allah subhanahu wa taala protect all of us and forgive all of us amin ya rabbal alamin so what is the whole point here the whole point is we learnt right that the severe the punishment the more value the forgiveness has got right and allah subhanahu wa taala he has clearly mentioned that his punishment is extremely severe unimaginable unimaginable in terms of pain in terms of suffering and in terms of time pulling the nail might be for what half a day one day it will get over right next time there is if he has pulled out all my 10 nails uh, next time until it grows he cannot pull the nail again so it, he has to wait for it to grow or he has to come back with another torture what about allah subhanahu wa taala he can repeat the same punishment over and over because everything will go get restored back so imagine so think about allah's severe punishment and when allah subhanahu wa taala says i'm forgiving you you know what he actually does he is actually saving you and me from that severe punishment la ilaha illallah you see when i told you that i will chop your hands and arms and uh, hands and legs off and i will forgive you you told me oh you'll be very grateful right the same amount of gratitude the same amount of relief we should get when allah subhanahu wa taala says i'm forgiving you because when he actually forgives us he is for, he is saving us from the terrible and the severe punishment so you will understand the value of allah subhanahu wa taala's forgiveness only when you understand the severity of allah's punishment if we do not understand the severity of allah subhanahu wa taala's punishment obviously this forgiveness right the value of that forgiveness will not be very high because you take it for granted ah amma allah to maaf karega hmm ata to maafi karega bhai al ghafur hai wo rahim hai right we will give, we'll give all this do we understand what is the value if i am not forgiven what will happen to me so this is where my dear brothers this is the difference if you don't understand this then they you know the forgiveness right it's it is something very cheap uh, i will you know, raise my hands allah min kafun tu hai blaf of afan yeah you will forgive me uh, i will stand in prayer and allah will forgive everything easy so simple i will stand i will do this i will do this and allah will forgive me it's a big deal my dear brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa taala's forgiveness is a big deal really big deal so when today night or from today onwards when you pray or when you ask allah subhanahu wa taala allahumma inna kafuun tuhibbul afwa fa'funi when you say ya allah you love to forgive when you say you love to forgive what does it mean allah subhanahu wa taala loves us so much that does not he does not want any of us to go through that terrible punishment he does not want any of us to go through that terrible punishment that is why he is loving to forgive else why will he forgive imagine if he doesn't forgive it's so a kind of sins that we do subhanallah right so you can see that when you ask this dua not only about allah's forgiveness also remember that the love allah subhanahu wa taala has got for us how much he cares for us that he does not want any of us to go through the terrible punishment subhanallah so the moment you do this with if you are a human being a decent human being who is conscious of what is happening from the heart there will be love for allah subhanahu wa taala from your heart there will be gratitude for allah subhanahu wa taala so next time when you ask allah's forgiveness bring to your mind the value of allah's forgiveness jazakum allah khair allah subhanahu wa taala forgive all of all of our sins allah subhanahu wa taala instill the attribute of gratitude in all our hearts amen rabbal alamin